Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this time because of your goodness, because of your power. We thank you because of the things you are doing for us this year. And Father, we pray that as you have started the year with us, you will continue in Jesus' name. We are asking that you will manifest your power, manifest your love, and send your word to us at this time in Jesus' name. Thank you for the answer. In Jesus' name I pray. We thank the Lord because he's brought us to his second Sunday of the year and of this month. You'll know this, this is the covenant month. And last week I talked to you on a new beginning with God. And I believe that we have started a new beginning in Jesus' name. Now, very briefly, I want you to look at the scriptures. Matthew chapter 14. Matthew chapter 14. I'll be sharing with you on faith journey to the other side. The faith journey to the other side. Matthew chapter 14 from verse 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away and when he had sent the multitudes away he went up into a mountain apart to pray and when the evening was come he was there alone but the sheep was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary and in the first watch of the night Jesus went unto them walking on the sea and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit and he cried out for fear but straightway Jesus spake unto them saying be of good cheer it is I be not afraid and Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the sheep, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. From the beginning of the year, the Lord has been encouraging us for us to know he has a great plan, a great purpose for every one of us this year and i'm believing god that the purpose he has the plan he has he will fulfill in jesus name now you see jesus christ had just ministered to five thousand people in fact according to bible record five thousand men the women and the children not counted it's ministered the word of God unto them, is fed them with food. And then he called his disciples and he said, We must move on, make progress, go forward. And he gave instruction. And from the story I have read to you, which are titled Faith Journey to the Other Side, I want you to look at four definite things. Number one, the plan of Christ. You don't want to start a year like this without having in your mind that Christ has a plan. He has a purpose. He has a goal, a target. The place is leading you to. Number two, problems of Christians. If you've been a Christian for a bit of time, you know that as a Christian, as a believer, there could be problems, but the problem should not overshadow, overthrow the plan that Christ had originally. Number three, the power for courage. 
the plan God has for you this year you'll discover there might be problems but understand the plan is in touch the purpose is in touch and then God can give you the power for courage that will make you to be able to get through and get over and the last part of the story peace through Christ the plan the problem the power and the peace now look at verses 22 and 23 and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away miracle had been performed Jesus had fed the multitude miraculously supernaturally but then he now showed his own disciples that he was giving them a direction don't live without direction in your life the moment God calls you or maybe after you have received a great miracle the supernatural in your life understand he wants to give direction purpose to your life and once that direction has been given nothing in earth nothing from the peach nothing from men or Satan can hinder that plan or stop that direction he told them let us go over or you go before me to the other side this year we are not going to remain where we have ever been we're going to get to the other side we're going to make progress we're going to move on in the power of the Lord and we are not going to remain at the same level of Christian standard we are not going to remain at the same uh, level of Christian commitment we are not going to remain at the same level of past achievement by the power of the Lord and the grace of God we are moving on and we are going to the other side because that's what he said that's the direction he gave that we should move to the other side there are Christians that live their lives without understanding that God gives us direction that God guides his own people that God leads his own people you know they'll ask the question how do you ever know that God will lead well my sheep hear my voice and they follow me and he said a stranger's voice they will not listen to he lead to the other side in fact he'll be so definite and specific as to moving on making progress and going to the other side in Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in age when ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left what an assurance for this year 1987 that wherever you are now and wherever he wants you to go making a plan for you mapping out his goal his target for you your ear will hear his voice the direction the leading saying this is the way to the place I'm leading you on to the other side and if Christ is leading you he's leading us to victory he never leads into defeat he never leads us into a peach he never leads us into anything that will harm or destroy our lives in Isaiah chapter 42 verse 16 and I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not I will lead them in paths that they have not known 1987 is new but I'm assuring you by the Word of God that he gives direction there is a plan in the mind of our Heavenly Father for us and that plan he will fulfill that goal by his power in partnership with him you are going to reach in the name of Jesus and he says I the Almighty God the omnipotent one the all-sufficient one the one that says I am that I am and
and he passed and nobody can hinder him he says i will bring the blind by a way that they knew not i will lead them in the past that they had not known i will make darkness before them isn't that wonderful i will make darkness before them and crooked things straight these things will i do unto them and not forsake them in psalm 143 verse 10 here is the psalmist knowing that god has a plan knowing that god has a purpose knowing that god has a place is leading him directing him you know what he says in prayer to god teach me in verse 10 psalm 143 teach me to do thy will for thou art my god thy spirit is good lead me into the land of uprightness and so brothers and sisters god is still the same the same in love the same in wisdom and he wants to lead he wants to guide and this new year he's saying come along with me in the faith journey and let's go on to the other side and i am believing god this year will be different from for every one of us in jesus name as a church it will be different as, an indiv as individuals it will be different as families it will be different because he has a plan to take us to the other side now listen you see many people do not understand the ways of God that when God has a plan and you take a step and you say I am going to follow problems may arise and then it's when you are able to differentiate between the mature and the immature then it's when you are able to differentiate the one that knows the lord and knows him intimately and the one that doesn't know the lord as much come back to matthew chapter 14 from verse 24 but the sheep was now in the midst of the sea tossed with waves for the wind was contrary and in the fourth watch of the night jesus went unto them walking on the sea and when the disciples saw him walking on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear that's the second point problems of Christians do you know that Christians could have problems and you know some people doubt that Christian experiences just because they have problems you know there are people that will doubt what Jesus told them before the leading of the Lord before just because they have problems you know the people that are always seeking for the will of god and will say i am trying to find the will of god but i thought you said last week you knew the will of god about that matter that last month you said you knew the will of god about that matter oh yes i knew the will of god but look at these problems you know what they think they think if it's the will of god there will never be problems if there is a problem in that scene on that way in this program in the project then it is not the will of god at all but listen god has his plan god has his purpose you put your hand in the hands of god and say lead me on i want to do thy will O god then you'll find that lucifer that old serpent the devil satan he, he is not going to make it easy for you to live and do the will of god as soon as you step into the will of god the devil wants to try his worst he wants to fight hard so that he can beat you out of that will of god that's why we have problems but if you stand firm and start sure and say 
I know the Lord who has called me. I know we're moving on to the other side. And brethren, this year, we're moving on to the other side. No more defeat, there will be victory. No more lack of faith, no more fear, there will be faith. And this year, to the other side, where everything is bright and glorious, where everything is being directed by the Lord, we're moving on to the other side in Jesus' name. But then, the devil is going to bring some confusion. You know, they, they got in there, Jesus had gone to the mountain to pray. And these were the disciples, they were rowing hard, they were, they, they were going hard, and they were trying their best so that they'll be able to get to the other side. You believer, that's what we do. We try our best, we do our best, that we'll keep in the will of God, we'll keep in the way of God, we'll keep in the word of God, we'll be going on and going on and going on. But the storms were against them. You know, in your family, problems in the family, and you say, well, I'm a believer now, why are all these things there? I'm a child of God now, why are all these things there? If it is true, the covenant we made with the Lord at the beginning of the year, and the Lord is taking us on, why am I experiencing all this? Because the devil will want to fight the will of God in your life. You know, you've been in another place. In another religion and here you are today born again alive in Christ going on with the Lord and you're saying I praise the Lord I'm on my way to heaven I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ he is my Savior he is my Shepherd he is my Lord he is my master he is leading me on he is giving me promises this year let's go to the other side all of a sudden problems come and you say am I in the will of God did I do right to give my life to Jesus Christ? Did I do right to get away from that other religion and come into a church like this just because of those problems? But you know, if you will understand, understand that the devil is fighting because you are in the will of God. What does the Bible say? I'm sure you know this in Psalm 34. Psalm 34, verse 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Afflictions of the righteous, problems of the Christian, a person who has made up his mind, I'm in the faith journey. I am going on. I've heard the voice of the Lord. He has said, come along with me. And I'm going along with him. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And I know that he is able to take me through. He's a great shepherd, the good shepherd. And I know that he will never lose the weakest of his saints. The weakest of his sheep. And I'm going on with him. But then the problem comes. Understand. Even though the problems might be there, the afflictions might be there. That... The Lord will deliver you. The Lord will deliver you. You know, the problem is not there to kill you, to destroy you. The problem is there to alert you that there is a devil around the corner. But, thank God, Jesus is nearer than the devil. You know, the disciples didn't know that while they were right in the midst of the sea, in the midst of that problem, Jesus was very near. Yes, the problem, but yes, the Savior. The difficulty, oh yes, but the deliverer here, just right here, very near. Even though the problems were there, Christ was very near. The next time you have a problem in your life, remember, Jesus is very near. Jesus is very near. Persecution arises, remember, Jesus is nearer than that persecution. A sickness arises in the family, remember, a great physician, Jesus, is nearer than that problem. In verse 25, and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear 
and you know they had physical problem then jesus christ was coming the thought spiritual problem had come on top of the physical problem think about it they saw jesus christ coming but remember there was no electricity like this it was dark so they just saw that figure coming from some distance and they wondered what could that be they were scared they were afraid you know in our lives our fears are caused by misinterpretation misinterpretation of the things that are happening the misinterpretation of the things that are really there because this was Jesus but because of their misinterpretation thinking that he might be that he was a spirit an evil spirit that's why they became afraid you know the heart of man is always thinking it's an evil spirit and when you when you look at people that talk about spiritual gifts and whenever they say the signing of spirits they are always thinking oh yes we're about to see an evil spirit they're on the lookout for something evil and so these disciples they got into this type of thing you remember um, a preacher that came here last year when he said fear actually f-e-a-r is false experiences appearing real you know all those things were false this is jesus christ their own explanation their own uh, interpretation uh, their what they thought they saw was totally false and yet it appeared an evil spirit appeared real to them just right away but then understand whatever the problems may be christ is near and he wants to deliver and he will deliver in jesus name Amen. if you've made promises to the lord you've given your life to the lord and you have part the world of the lord saying that i'll be with you this new year at the uh Tafaba square or last sunday or any of the services and now a problem has started oh don't say those preachers deceived me they told me i will get to the other side and look at it now this is january i have problems no don't be afraid don't be afraid god is going to get you out of that problem all those things you are seeing now your fear is just false experience um, appearing real but there's nothing to eat there's nothing to eat you stand on the word of the lord keep on looking to the lord and you will find that jesus christ will come and take you out of that problem and he will remove all the problems and you will still get to the place he wants you to get to in jesus name now peter as all these things were going on and he, he wasn't very sure could that be jesus the voice looks like the voice of jesus looking at him uh, the posture looking at him some distance up it looks like it could be jesus but because of the night because of the fear because of the problems because of the storm he wasn't really sure about what he was seeing or hearing and so he said if that's you really bid me come unto thee and jesus said come now remember that what jesus was doing here has never been done moses was a great lawgiver and a great prophet in israel he never walked on the water never and people like elijah elisha those mighty giants of faith in the old testament you never find any record they walked on the water you've read no doubt about daniel shadrach meshach and abednego those giants of faith that even in the new testament record it says these were the men of faith and theologians call them heroes of faith but they never walked on the water but then here came jesus christ walking on the water and peter said if that's you the purpose of my heart my goal in life 
the deep, deep desires in my heart has always been to be like Jesus Christ. And I do not want to go into past history that Moses never did it, Elijah never did it, Elisha never did it, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego never did it. If that's you, Jesus, and you called me, and my desire is to just be like you, even if it makes me to do something that looks incredible, something that looks impossible, something that looks unusual, extraordinary. If that's you, I want to be just like you. Bid me come unto thee. And Jesus said, come. Now, you know, Jesus never discouraged anyone that wants to get higher in faith. Pray higher in faith live higher in faith jesus never taught his disciples that they should be too conscious of impossibilities in fact he said the works i do, he that believeth on me the works i do he shall do and greater works than this shall you do because i go to the father and so jesus said come and on that single word peter without Confirming with flesh and blood without asking his good friend Andrew, without asking his good friend John, without asking his good friend James, do you think I should do it? Do you think I should come out? <laughs> well, they might be thinking because you know they were still not sure. Even Peter himself just said, If you are. So these other people in the boat were not very sure who that is. So ideas will be coming in their head. Peter, if you go out there, I'll take information back to your wife what really happened. Well, your wife will not have too much a problem because she knows that you have all the time been a daring person. And this thing might get you into trouble. Peter did not even discuss with them. And... Uh, of course, Thomas must have been there because he was one of the twelve. I'm sure Peter must have looked away from the direction of Thomas. Because if you look too closely to Thomas, you'll never try the impossible. You'll discuss it until the chance has passed. You'll debate it until there is nothing to do again. So Peter, in faith, he just stepped out. And the Lord is calling you this year come up higher the things I did you can do the way I prayed you can pray the life I lived you can live the holiness I showed and revealed to humanity when I was here on earth you can live such a life and Jesus is saying come and if you'll believe if you'll say I will and I know by your power I'm able you will in Jesus name Amen. what gives us power for courage what makes a Christian have so much courage that he looks different from all these other people what makes a Christian live a life pray a prayer and challenge the evil spirits and evil powers and then get on top of the sea and walk on the sea without any hindrance and he appears courageous about it knowing as a child of god greater is he that lives in me and i know that i am able to see it in the word of god in deuteronomy chapter 31 deuteronomy chapter 31 Verse 6. Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Brothers and sisters, you don't need to wait until you study the whole Bible and fill your mind, fill your heart, fill your head with Genesis all through to Revelation. Just this single sentence, just this single verse. If you take it, if you believe it, if you meditate on it, if you rest your whole weight on it and you say, God has spoken to me. He has told me 
Be strong. Be of good courage. Fear not. Nor be afraid of them. The Lord thy God. The Lord thy God. He it is that goes with thee. He will not fail thee. He will not forsake thee. If you stand on that single verse. And you trust that single word of the Lord. You will find that there will be courage in your heart. To live like Christ. Pray like Christ. And do the things that Christ wants you to do. That's how Peter stepped on the water. And he started coming. Of course, when he saw the wind, he began to sink. But please, John had no right to point at Peter and say, There you are, there you are, now you are sinking. He had no right because he had never tried it, he had never done it. And so a person that had never tried and failed has no right to point accusing finger to the person that has even tried. And he walked on the water. And of course he prayed a short prayer because he believed. He now knew it is not just a spirit. He said, Lord, save me. That means that he had got to understand that this is really Jesus Christ. This is the Lord. With him all things are possible. I may not be able to come out of the water myself, but he will do it. Lord, save me. And the Lord raised him up. And then we're told, both of them came into the ship. And as they came into that ship, there was peace. Peace through Christ. You know, one of the greatest things you can enjoy being a believer is to have the peace of God. Whatever the circumstance, whatever the problems, whatever people are saying around you, to remain in the peace of God. And to enjoy that peace that passes understanding. It's one of the greatest things you can have. And Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And as he enters into the ship, so that he will still make you to get to the other side, there will be peace in Jesus' name. Amen. Now remember, God has a plan for your life. He has a plan for your life. And he will fulfill that plan. Remember, problems may come. Those problems will never cancel the plan. And remember, all the power for courage we need from Christ, we can go to the Lord, and the Lord will give unto us. And all through our lives, resting in him, we can be at peace. He is a prince of peace. Isaiah chapter 26 and in verse 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because... He trusteth in thee. Take away your mind from what the devil can do. Take away your mind from what persecutors can do. Take away your mind from what circumstances the sons of light may have. And let your mind trust in him. Let your mind stay on him. There will be peace. Perfect peace. He'll keep you in safety. He'll keep you in peace. And the joy of the whole thing is that the disciples, they got to the other side. Do you know this year, every one of us without exception, if you can only trust the Lord, the plan of the Lord for you this year will not fail. For your family, it will not fail. And for the church, it will not fail. The demons in the air, Satan may even increase his power, may increase his opposition. But once Jesus has given out the word, let us go to the other side. Before you know what is happening, storm or no storm, problem or no problem, difficulties or no difficulties, you're already on the other side. And we're moving on. I said we're moving on. I said we're moving on. And we're going to get to the other side in Jesus' name. Wipe away the tears. Look away from the problem. And fix your mind and fix your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. And put your hand in his hands. And let him lead you onto your other side. Can you rise up on your feet? You tell the Lord. 
that this year you are going on to the other side. You are going on to the other side. There is victory. There is power. All you need, God provides when you get into this faith journey and you get to the other side. Forget about those problems. Christ is nearer. The Lord is nearer than those problems.